Last year, a tsunami left more than 18 million tons of debris in its wake. Disposing of the remains is proving to be a major and costly problem. The central government is hoping municipalities around the country will help with the cleanup, but few have stepped forward. NHK World's Misato Ishikawa has more. The city of Ishinomaki in Miyagi Prefecture has the largest amount of debris among all the tsunami hit regions, about 5 million tons. Those piles pose a problem. The temperature inside of this pile is about 80 degrees Celsius. Last August, one of the piles actually caught on fire. The government has been struggling to transfer the debris to temporary storage sites. Only half of the debris in Ishinomaki has so far been collected. There is just too much and no more places to store it. Temperatures will rise in summer and flies could transmit infection. I don't think we can proceed with reconstruction or even dream of the future as long as the debris remains. The government aims to dispose of all the debris by March 2014. Part of its disposal plan would see municipalities around the country accept some two and a half million tons. So far, six local governments have agreed, but they are willing to take just over one million tons, about 43 percent of the target amount. Many local governments are reluctant to help out over concerns of radioactive contamination. Recently, assembly members from Aichi Prefecture visited the site in Miyagi Prefecture to see a disposal facility. They are hoping to reassure skeptical residents in Aichi. That's a bag filter on the side where hazardous substances are broken up into small particles and get sucked up. So what's coming out of it is steam, not smoke. People in Japan are critical of the slow disposal pace. They also say the government is not releasing information on the safety of the debris quickly enough. Facing growing criticism, the government in October set radioactive safety limits at between 240 and 480 becquerels per kilogram after consulting international organizations. Officials in Aichi are considering whether to accept the debris. The safety standards are not trusted by people in Japan. Aichi Prefecture will set a stricter standard than the national one. But the residents of Aichi are not as accepting about taking debris as the prefecture authority and local assembly members. A Toyota factory in Tahara City is one of the candidate sites that the Aichi governor says will receive debris. Masanobu Nagata heads a citizen's group that is campaigning against accepting the week. He worked as a radiation technologist at the hospital for 25 years before becoming a farmer. Nature still exists here. I feel that the potatoes we grow taste better. Joined by like-minded citizens, Nagata continues studying radioactive contaminants from the debris. We have to protect our children. We shouldn't let our town accept the debris without having further confirmation. The safety limits sharply deviate from waste disposal standards set in the past. They will allow contaminated materials to be moved around the nation and destroy Japan's beautiful nature. One year after the March 11th disaster, fears of radioactive contamination are keeping local governments around the country from agreeing to accept debris for disposal. This has left the government in the position where it may not be able to live up to its pledge of completing the disaster cleanup by 2014.
Misato Ishikawa has covered the nuclear crisis from several angles over the last year. She joins us from our studio in Sendai. Misato, it's great to have you with us. So you outlined a number of problems in getting rid of this debris. How complex are these issues? They've got to move mountains of debris, more than 80 million tons. Officials at the Environment Ministry drew up a master plan shortly after the disaster. But concerns about contamination forced them to test the rubble and consult with the International Atomic Energy Agency. So it took them six months to set safety standards. As the government was slow to disclose needed information and give proper instruction after the disaster last year, people have doubts on this waste disposal issue as well. We can't deny the government's explanation about the debris safety was insufficient. We're now seeking municipalities' understanding by providing whatever information is needed. And you mentioned in your report that government officials plan to complete the disposal by March 2014. How likely are they to meet that deadline? Government officials plan to speed up the disposal process. They want to keep existing incinerators running at full capacity. And they are building 31 incinerators in northeast Japan. But staying on schedule depends on how many local governments get on board. Six local governments have agreed to accept the rig. Officials in Tokyo were the first to step up. They have a greater capacity to process the breeds than the others. Disposal work has been progressing smoothly. Japanese government officials hope it can serve as a model so they can meet their March 2014 deadline. Misato, thanks for your time.